What we're trying to accomplish through virtual reality is reaching an even higher level of immersing people in the universe of the story we are trying to tell them. The Infinite is a narrative journey that takes you aboard the International Space Station and that brings us, humans, non-astronauts, as close to space as we can imagine. What is remarkable here is that we're talking about the human experience in space. It's about the moments that you spend with the astronauts, personal moments. When you see the magnificence of this production and you experience their life through their eyes and through their mornings, their afternoons and their evenings, watching all these sunsets and sun sunrises in space, then you understand what it's like to be up there. We basically needed the astronauts to be our crew. We needed the astronauts to be our subjects. They realized this would be the first time that they would be able to bring their families or their collaborators to finally get a taste of what it's like to be in space. When we do operations from ground to space, ahead of time we will send the astronauts diagram for, you know, where we want the camera, in which orientation, how we are thinking about lighting, and what kind of action or creative objective that we're looking to capture on the day. Once that has been communicated, the astronaut has to do everything. The creative brief that you send the astronaut might make sense to a certain extent, but maybe something will be different on the day in the overall conditions of the space station. So the astronauts will say, well, okay, they want this, but I will do that. And therefore they contribute creatively and they also become the protagonist. We encouraged them if they were ever inspired or if there was ever something cool that wasn't on the schedule that was happening, the routine of going to bed, for example, uh, that they could just pull out a camera and frame a shot themselves. And whether they confessed to the camera or just shot themselves, uh, you know, in an intimate moment that would not have been scheduled otherwise. So one thing that we're creating for uh, The Infinite is a film captured from the cupola. So it's a seven minute continuous observation of planet Earth from within the cupola. The overview effect is, is extraordinary in the sense that it can trigger very deep emotions and, and deep thoughts in many different ways. We think that it's essential to give audiences that experience, to just let them experience it and feel it for themselves because it's, it's quite powerful to be able to see the fragility and the preciousness of the biosphere in one view and feel that hyper-connection between all humans. When you're talking about a piece of virtual reality content that was filmed and that is what we call 3DOF or three degrees of freedom, uh, essentially we're talking about uh, pa uh, panning, tilting and rolling, right? Versus six degrees of freedom, with also, which also allows you to move in those th same axes, right? Um, we have both in this exhibit. This transition between the six degrees of freedom and the three degrees of freedom starts with the user interaction on these hotspots, which are luminous spheres that are levitating inside and outside of the ISS. It was essential for us to find a mechanic that forces the immobilization of the user to activate these hotspots without really insisting. And the fact that the user has to interact with these spheres for a few seconds makes it possible to transition from an environment in which they are used to moving around and switch to a video playback with a mobile immersion. However, the orientation allows one to look 360 degrees at any time in these videos. What is new and innovative in the Infinite experience is that the technologies used are pushed to their limits. There are very few experiences that have attempted to mix a free roaming world and a three degrees of freedom world. We really push the limits of the number of people simultaneously in a collective, interactive experience in virtual reality. We are talking about a hundred simultaneous users. Since all the visitors have a VR headset on their heads, they aren't aware of each other. Therefore, to help them orient themselves within the experience, we use Anti-Latency's real-time tracking device. 
en temps réel euh, qui s'appelle Anti-Latency. This device has an infrared camera that is connected to each VR headset and allows the headset to position itself relative to a physical marker, which in this case is the mat laid out on the floor in which are embedded infrared lights, each with a unique pattern, allowing the headset to locate itself anywhere within the room. The infinite really brings these two together, the visual fidelity of the footage that we've captured in outer space with the freedom of movement and interaction and social interaction that comes with interactive VR. When you watch footage, that was the footage that we shot on the ISS, you get a sense of the space, but it's a little harder to get a sense of the geography of the ISS. But having this free-roaming, full-scale representation of the ISS allows you to really understand what size the ISS is, its layout, uh, its uh, proximity to the Earth, Visitors will have access to different content in certain areas of the room, which can depend on the group that they belong to, the order of their arrival, or if they're with their family, all in order to maintain a certain distance between the participants so that they can have an enjoyable experience. Finally, if I came with Julie, she and I will have a body color and shape that will be much warmer and allow us to find each other in the experience. From a technological standpoint, it is unimaginable to be able to tell such a story if the visitors would have to be equipped with heavy or hindering devices to allow them to feel the sensations of being in space, such as weightlessness, that are told through everything that this experience contains. For the headsets, we chose to go with the Oculus Quest 2. They were the only headsets that could give us enough performance for the infinite. The other exciting aspect of the Quest 2 is the hand tracking. You can interact with objects on the ISS. The headphones are Sennheiser HD25s, which are traditionally DJ headphones designed in the 1970s and are professional, high-end headphones. The beauty of these is that we can take them apart, which from an operational standpoint allows us to repair them in case they break. And to ensure the safety of visitors, we have developed a UV station to sanitize the VR headsets. The technology we use is UVC light, and we have a room on site where we store and maintain 350 Quest headsets. Through this type of experience, in virtual reality, we really work on a moment, a feeling of presence, and that, for me, is a whole universe of potential for people who tell stories. It's early days, but there's a lot of potential, and we're really excited at Phi Studio to be working on projects like this that will take visitors to places that you could never go without virtual reality. Avoir accès à la, sans la réalité virtuelle.